And the way to understand it is this. Divide the population into two parts. Corporations, bigger ones, and rich people. Five, ten percent of the richest people. That's one group. And everybody else is the rest. All the mass of people and little businesses. They're the mass. They both look at the government and they have the exact same demands. Each of the two groups wants the government to do things for them. And each of the two groups doesn't want to pay the taxes to pay for what they want the government to do for them. Corporations want all the benefits of, of a highway system and of uh, controlling the world economy to make it advantageous for them to function. They want the government to do all these expensive things, buy lots of stuff from these companies and all the rest, uh, military industrial complex, uh, m medical industrial complex, all of that. Meanwhile, the mass of people, they want loans for their kids to go to school. They want swimming pools in the neighborhood. They want the national parks to be clean and nice, and blah, 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 public schools and all the rest. Well, you know, you don't need an advanced degree. You really don't. To understand that if the two sides want the government to do everything possible for them, and neither of them wants to pay taxes to pay for it, then the government is going to have a problem, right? This is a problem. How has the political structure of our capitalist economy, and I don't mean just the United States, this is true everywhere, how do they solve the problem? Well, they solve the problem in the obvious way. The minute I tell you, you see, oh yeah, of course. If you were a politician and you had to keep delivering the things to the people who didn't want to pay for them, what are you going to do? And the answer is borrow the money. By borrowing, you solve the problem. When you borrow the money, you can produce all the things the corporations want, the rich people want, and the masses want. And you don't have to raise the taxes on anybody to pay for it. That's what the people want. That's what we'll give them. So the politicians borrow. And who do they borrow from to pull this wonderful thing off? Well, you can't really borrow from the mass of people for a very simple reason. They don't have anything. So if you're going to borrow, you have to borrow from the corporations and the rich. Well, they have it. So for the corporation and the rich, they look at this situation, they hire an economist, if they're not smart enough to figure it out themselves, and the economist, someone like me, explains to them, well, you rich people and corporations, here's your basic choice. If you want this society to keep going, either you pay the taxes, which will allow the government to do all the things for everybody that's wanted here, and so our society will continue, or you don't pay the taxes. But if you don't pay the taxes, you put the politicians in an impossible situation. But don't despair, because there's a solution. You don't have to pay the taxes, because you know what you can do instead? You lend it to the government. That's how we solve the problem. The rich and the corporations don't pay the taxes, puts the government in the jam, and the government gets out of the jam by going to the rich and the corporations not taxing them, which would have gotten the money, taken care of the problem, and left the government with no debt. No, 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 we don't do that. Instead, we go to the exact same people, borrow the money from them, so the government can do the same thing, but is stuck with a perpetual, overwhelming debt that freaks everybody out. Is this a necessary way to solve the problem? No. Is it a rational way to solve the problem? No! This is a way to solve the problem that panders to corporations and the rich. It basically says to them, you have the money that the government needs to keep this society going. But you don't want to part with it. And so we are here to tell you, you don't have to. We'll borrow it from you. We'll pay it all back and pay you an interest for being so kind, you lovely people. The only thing worse than that is to have that go on for 25 years and suddenly rich people say, you know something, we're not willing to lend anymore because you're, such, you're so deeply in debt, we're not, sure, you know, we're not sure you're going to be able to pay and so we're not going to, we, yeah, no more lending, no, 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 you can't, we're not going to give you the money, we're not going to give it to you in taxes, we never did. And we're not going to lend it to you anymore either. So you're up against it, politician. And you know what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to stop providing goods and services to the mass of people. That's called austerity. And that's who we got.
That's what we got. The end game of this absurdity. Okay, the last cross the United States. Yeah. Both. There's not enough rich people in the United States with enough money willing to lend it to the United States government. They're willing to lend a good chunk, but the rest of it they want to make more than they can by lending to the United States government. And so they look for other governments, and they're particularly interested in um, leaving the United States vulnerable to the difficulty that if you have to borrow huge amounts of money, which the United States government does, and you can't get it from your own rich, you can't get enough from your own rich and corporations, then you go to China and you go to Japan. Those are the two major countries that we've gone to. But it's not either or, it's, it's both. <laughs>